is it, the final round of the British Superbike Championships and we're here at a very windswept Brands Hatch circuit. Coming up on today's show. We crown Berners BSB champion for 2014, speak to a disappointed Kinari about the way his season finished and hear from your new Super Sports title holder. What a finale to the BSB season, such an historic victory. Here is your new champion. I feel sorry for Keo now. <laughs> I listen to him and uh, you can only imagine how he feels, you know, because I came here with a 12-point with a advantage and, you know, I started the showdown with a 27-point one after having a 107-point lead. And I said at the beginning of the showdown, 27 points might as well be nothing because one accident or one mechanical problem or one, one anything, and, and that, then points will be gone. And <laughs> sure enough, I went and crashed in Essen, which was... A stupid mistake by me, and um, then I crashed yesterday morning, uh, yesterday in the in the afternoon race, and I sat there. You know, when I I, I slipped off the bike, and I kind of held on to the bike for as long as possible because I just I just didn't want to let the bike go. You know, it was a, it was a real difficult moment because I did nothing wrong, and I know that when we fall down, we're not allowed to get back on. But I just felt like it was it was almost unfair that that, that I'd fallen down because. As I said to you yesterday, I think the, the data logging on the bike showed absolutely no nothing any different. So today was um, today was a very very difficult day. Um, I never knew until the last minute that, that Keo wasn't going to ride, and you know he's uh, he's he's exactly the same as me. He's a three-time British Super Bike champion before this weekend, the same as I was, and he's the second most successful winner. So for, for he and I to be fighting for the fourth championship was, uh, you know, was, was really, really fitting. Don't get me wrong, it would have been great to be fighting with Tommy or uh, James or somebody like that. But, uh, you know, to have that battle with, uh, with Keo, you know, to come here with 12 points and, and us two to be able to have two or three great races would have been absolutely wonderful. And I'm sure it's what, uh, you know, all of you guys would have, would have loved to have seen. You know, I touched on it earlier on when I said that I felt only fitting today that, that I could go out and try and win two races and uh, you know do the best job I could and, and fortunately we got that job done but um, yeah I, I kind of didn't ask for him to fall down yesterday and I didn't ask for myself to fall down in the race either so it's a, it's a tough tough situation but uh, my only worry is that he'll come back next year stronger now so, <laughs> um, so we're going to have to work especially hard to, uh, to remain on top next year and you know, if I if I get something done in BSB again, I look forward to uh, to rekindling some battles, both with Tommy, James, Keo. You know, it's going to be hopefully another great season. But lots of people spoke in the middle of the season about the fact that, that I didn't win a race for I don't know how many rounds it was, five of rounds or something. But uh, you know, when I didn't win those races, I was finishing second uh, or I was finishing third. And you know, ultimately, some of my competitors sit there gobbing off about luck and whatever else. But, uh, you know, when he's on his ass and sitting on the floor, you know, you're not going to win a championship if you do that. You need to be on the podium all the time. And you need to be you need to be consistent. And uh, whilst it wasn't wins when, when Keo was winning or whatever, it was it was seconds and thirds. And, uh, you know, all those points amassed to, to give us enough of a, a buffer, if you like, to, to get this done, you know, today. So absolutely delighted over the moon for, for, for the Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki team, for Paul Bird Motorsport, for Shoei, Alpine Stars, he pay me everybody that, that that you know that supports me and helps me so uh yeah it's a it's a strange championship but it means the world to me and uh i'm sure like i said these guys will be back stronger next year and if i can be here and i can try and fight with them it would be a pleasure one thing with bike racing is that you can never predict what is going to happen and that was the case for uichi kionari the title challenger was so close to claim his fourth historic title but it all ended in a dramatic fashion my shoulder pain, but uh, uh, I'm fine. Like you know, like this, you know, like remember, you know what, you know, I did like very bad mistake and uh, <coughs> many things. That's why uh, last night was very hard, and yesterday uh, just hard. Sh for sure, shoulder is pain, but more pain. My head, you know, you know, had to say. That's why hard, hard to, uh, yeah, hard, hard time. But today also very hard to oh, decision, you know, riding or not, not riding. But 
morning warm up I tried to ride but the condition not so good and this one uh, now and then shaky one championship and then I decide no more race to um, but yeah like unbelievable this, this unbelievable this season like you know every day I enjoy and uh, I'm happy and finish also unbelievable not good but uh, yeah um, I enjoy this this season it's true to say that Josh Brooks has had a mixed season he's had some extreme highs but some lows as well but one good thing for him is that he signed again for Milwaukee Yamaha Milwaukee Yamaha for 2015 come about um, through a long process of you know trying to work out what was going to give me uh, my best future really um, you know, it was no secret, you know, that, that I've wanted to get back in the world scene for a long time, you know, and, and this year I was quite uh, adamant that that's what I wanted to do. And, um, uh, but also that's got to come uh, if there's an opportunity, you know, you, you can't, you know, a, a race car driver could want to be in Formula One, like I want to be in MotoGP, but it's like a unicorn, you know, you, you just, it's just, if it isn't there, you, you can't, you can't have it. So. Uh, the World Superbike thing didn't uh, didn't come off this time around for different reasons, and um, so uh, and, the, and the Moto Two options that I had were all about money, and I was like, forget it, I'm not bringing money. So uh, I focused on the BSB, and you know, without going into too much detail, the Yamaha gave me the best chance of, of a future to get into World Superbike. I mean, there's a new model to be uh, released in November. Um, the bike I'm on at the moment. I'm getting podiums and I've had a couple of wins, so it's it's close to being good enough. And you know, with a with a new model out, it's uh, most definitely going to be quicker and and better handling. So with those uh, things in mind, it means that you know I've got a better chance at uh, at the championship. And then, but yeah, what I keep referring to is most important is is the future. What I want to try and get to. When I think about the championship, I'm disappointed. I'm I'm really upset, annoyed, disappointed, frustrated, bitter, angry. Every, every emotion you can think of because I believe that uh, I've got the ability to beat, beat Keo and Shaky and I just haven't had the situation to meet them in a championship. And I feel like that about my year last year with Suzuki and I feel like that about years before, you know, even when I was on a Honda, there's, there's always a reason, but you know, I can't focus on all the reasons that it didn't uh, win or it didn't go for me every time. So when I get to the racetrack, I just, I just forget about all that stuff and just just go and race my bike. That's what I did last round, the round before. And you know whether it's a it's a great weekend, you get a lap record and a win or something, and you got loads to celebrate, or whether you had a a couple of DNFs. You know what I mean? You, you, I, that's that's just part of the whole roller coaster that we're, that we're on as a motorcycle racer. So um, I try not to get um, you, you know the. The racing and the life is, is very up and down. You have extreme highs and extreme lows. So uh, I feel it would be um, a, a negative if I followed that same pattern in myself. I try to stay the uh, middle ground. You know, I try not to get too overexcited with, with good results and, and talk about how brilliant I am or get too depressed by a bad weekend and, and think it's the end of the world. I try and just stay this, this middle ground person and, and try and stay uh, consistent, stable with my thoughts and my mind and just um, let all the other things that happen happen around me and, and just try and do the best I can each time. Even if you take results out of it altogether, even if I got no results, uh, as in no podium finishes or whatever, um, I still have a fond and um, an interest in life for the for the road, you know. So and the road racing. So um, I, I want to be part of it, but it, it has to come together. You know, I can't force the team into doing it because that's what I want to do. Um, it has to be because that's what everyone wants to do, and the sponsors are like. It has to be, you know, a real a real come together because. Um, it is a big workload to take on for the team, the mechanics, the personnel. So, um, if there's just even one person that doesn't want to be there, it could have a bad uh, um, domino effect on, on how the weekend runs. So, it really needs to be, um, you know, 
well conducted to, to, to whether we make that decision to go and do the roads again. But from my perspective, I'd like to, I'd like to do it. You can always rely on the Steel Sport Pass to bring you tons of excitement and lots of drama. This season went right down to the wire here at Brands Hatch, and here is your worthy winner. Sounds fantastic, you know, it's something I keep telling myself every night, you know, when we're going to bed that it could happen and, you know, I've been knocking on the door the last five years and, you know, I've seen Alistair win it, my teammate Glenn win it and, you know, lots of other people and we've come close and, and round, there and roundabout and probably why my performance dropped off the last couple of rounds, probably wanted it too much and just started overriding myself and, uh, yeah, it didn't come. So, um, you know, I've been a gift of a lot of good opportunities this year with uh, Graham had a technical problem, Alistair had that bit in the mid-year and, um, you know, that's that's you need that luck to go your way sometimes to win a championship. You know, you, um, you know when the previous years I've had engine problems and stuff like that. But we've been faultless, as in with our mechanical side and everything else. We've had bad some bad rounds, and but you know, looking back at it now, you know we've got the trophy to prove it. So you can't really say it was wrong either. You know, we had to be consistent and, and there and thereabouts. But oh, you know, it's just such a big relief to get the, the championship won and. Um, you know, to have a great teammate like Graham, you know, he's wearing my t-shirt here up on the podium and we come within a few points of each other, you know, so it's, uh, it's just been a fantastic, a fantastic year. Um, a lot of, a lot of big relief from, for just getting the job done. So, um, yeah, just really happy and happy with the team and just can't wait to get having a few beers with these guys and celebrate the year. This year's Superstock 600 season could not have been any closer with the race going down to the wire here at Brand Hatch. And now here is your winner. I know, uh, it's, it's amazing and uh, it's funny enough the first three on the front row was all battling for the championship and first, second and third in the race was all battling for the championship. Me, Andy and Joe deserve that trophy just as much as I do, I've had a great year racing, just, just that I'm on top and uh, I'm just going to go and celebrate and enjoy myself. I know after Silverstone, I knew in my head I'd won the championship but it was just if I could come and do it here and uh, it's been a bit dodgy conditions all weekend, wet and dry. I've been I've been seventh, eleventh, third, and I'm a bit I'm a bit weary because Andy's been fastest all weekend. But I got a good start, got my head down, and I thought, right, I'm here now. It's all about passing and sticking your elbows out, and that's what I did, and I won. And I uh, can't thank anybody enough. Lots of teams are already planning for 2015, and this team is no exception. And there will be a Ducati on the grid next year. It has been very positive, yeah. Definitely made some jumps forward. Um, smashed our lap times from previous seasons with, with Cooper on board and with a bit of development of the bike. So, yeah, really happy going into 2015. It's been difficult, you know. It's a, we're a small team and working with a bike that takes a bit of development. We're on our own with the only Ducati in the paddock. So it's not like we've got any shared data or we've got any data to fall back on. Um, but we've, we've had a bit of help from Ducati Corsa. We're sharing information with them. We didn't have a firm plan for 2015 until very recently. Um, we spoke to Ducati and they've uh, decided to support us a bit further, which is great. Um, they're going to help us out a lot next year. Um, and we had a few sponsors that were in the sidelines waiting for us to make a decision about if we're going to go racing or not. Um, we decided to go racing, can't seem to stay away. And when Ducati said we'll help you out a bit more, we decided to expand the team probably into a two rider team next year. Um, and, uh, and we brought on board a new sponsor for this weekend with Lloyds British, which is fantastic. Uh, he's a real, that company's a real Ducati fan as well. So it's a good, good environment. Being the only Ducati carries a bit of responsibility that we historically haven't had the budget to, to live up to, but hopefully we'll have a bit of a stronger year next year. That, looking forward to that. Ian Hutchinson has not had the best of comeback since his debilitating string of injuries, but he ended his year in BSB with the Paul Bird team in the Superstock 1000 class and already has plans for the roads in 2015. Probably should have expected it to be quite hard after all the time that I've had out of racing and um, although I've ridden a couple of times in between at the road racings, I've not raced on a short circuit for four years until this year. So. You know, it was um, always going to be a big ask moving into the Superbike class first time back, but, um, you know, the opportunity came. I've always wanted to ride in the Superbike class and I had to take, I had to take it, you know, and uh, it hasn't really worked out for one reason or another and, you know, it's been a letdown really and even the, the road racing this year, the bike's not suited um, what we've been doing on the roads with, you know, the Yamaha just wasn't suited to the TT and, we lost a lot of track time through problems with it and you know the whole thing has just been hard work really. Well obviously I've signed with Paul Bird for next year and um, it's a fresh start for me and at the end of the year I'm doing these last couple of rounds on the Superstock just to try and 
get myself back enjoying racing bikes really because it's just been such a tough year and I haven't really been enjoying it so but um, you know for next year we're, we're going to have a fresh start and um, the package is going to be really strong from Paul's team obviously what he's put out in the past is speaks for itself so um, I'll get plenty of riding done in winter and um, you know I, I want to put all my effort into the Isle of Man as much as I want to still achieve on the short circuits and I need to get my, my name back where it should be for the TT and maybe last year I spread myself out a bit trying to achieve stuff in the British and everywhere else and I think uh, I need to focus on what I do on the short circuit is purely to get myself prepared for the roads rather than trying to achieve things in the short circuit stuff as well. Yeah, we'll be doing the North West 200 um, and the Ulster and obviously we're doing Macau in a week, so in three weeks, so I'll have had a good run out on the Superbike before winter, which will be good. We're doing a test on it before Macau and Macau is one of those places, you know, it's a scary race and uh, very dangerous and if it's going for you, it's going for you. and. Um, I've had a good run out there in the past, I've, I think I've been there seven times, I've finished on the podium six times and brought it down once, so you know, I, hopefully it will be somewhere near, but uh, it's going to be tough and obviously my teammate Stuart Easton has been riding his bike all year, so I'm going to get um, a, a, an afternoon on it next week, <laughs> but there shouldn't be any excuses because I'm riding Shaky's bike, so... <laughs> Everyone is packing up here at Brands Hatch for yet another end to the British Superbike season. Thank you so much for watching in 2014. We're Bikesport News TV.